Hey, everybody, look who is here. I, I would kind of say she's like the talk of the hour uh, of the day, but uh, I have Haley Aaron here from The Young and the Restless. You're you're clearly in Genoa City because you have a sign behind you. Exactly. Yes. Oh, on the side. <laughs> As I, um, wow, we have all been chatting on social media. Everybody's guessing and was, you know, guessing along with what is really happening. And you played this so beautifully. And I have to give you kudos because you kind of saw the switch and the, and you know, like there were so many elements to this, to her and what had happened. But let's discuss um, what we just saw and we will work our way back a little bit. So you just have this huge episode that we all saw. And Claire believes, we're going to call her Claire for the moment, believes that um, Victoria, you know, just didn't care about her and like threw to the wolves as, as a baby and didn't care. But she's hearing another side of it. And she doesn't know who to believe. What did you think about that when you found out what the script was and heard about how like intense this was? I mean... I can't think of anything more shocking than to find out basically your entire life has been a lie. So for Claire, I mean, what an interesting moment to get to depict this, this moment that her entire life comes crumbling down. The moment that Jordan said, you know, I took you from the hospital. That is just world shifting. Like that she was never told this. She was never told this. No, no. Claire was led to believe that she was put up for adoption, basically, that they didn't want her. And now the truth comes out. What was it like taping those scenes? What was that one episode like where it was like a play and it was everybody was in it all through it? What was it like taping that episode? And did you guys laugh through it? Was it dramatic? Like, how did you guys all get through the knife, you know, the slash um, stairs, the vials of antidote, the everything we saw play out? It was a long day. I mean, that day and the day before it, they were the two episodes that went right next to each other. And they were two pretty long days. But I have to say, I've never worked with a funnier group of people in my entire life. I laughed my way through the days. Uh, it went by really quickly and it was so fun. I really enjoyed, I mean, I'm trying to think, I don't think I've ever done an episode where the it was the entire show was the one story. So that was a really cool experience because you really got to live in this moment. Sometimes the scenes can feel like they move really quickly or you know, you're jumping back and forth between storylines and you don't really get to sit with, the material and it was such a it was such a fun way to do it to feel it was so lived in because I was sitting there as Claire for 48 hours <laughs> I was really in it so it was a really really interesting experience a lot of lines but uh lot of that's lines. another problem that's all other <laughs> on that note having left daytime and coming back in and to play the role is it a muscle memory or is it a struggle to get back in that rhythm? Both. I think both are true. I definitely appreciate that I have this muscle formed. I definitely was impressed with how easy it was for me to jump back in. But I have to say it's definitely harder now with two toddlers. That's the big difference. I've got twin two-year-old girls now and they don't care that I have 60 pages the next day they're like, like I'm Claire. <laughs> yeah they're like what are you doing um hello where are you going um oh also we don't want to sleep so you have to get up in the middle of the night <laughs> that makes things a little bit harder right but yeah it's really it's a cool muscle I think there's I have such great respect for everyone in daytime because it's I mean I know how hard I find it but some people make it look really easy I just read an interview with Josh Griffith who kind of explained, and I want to get your take on this or take me through the audition process for this. I was understanding that, tell me if this is correct or incorrect, but what we saw play out in that episode was that part of the audition, the switch where she was not like she realized she was evil 
or there was like a switch that you had to play in the audition process? Yeah, yeah, there was. I mean, the first, there were two scenes that I read uh, and I did a, a test with Melody, who I just love working with. Um, and so the first scene was very much beginning Claire, assistant, very good at my job, business talk, like so many business words. And then the second scene was, I hate the Newmans. I hate them. I hate you all. You're just like disgusting and so full of yourselves and you think you're so amazing. And so I had done the scenes and then the I got a, jo- a note from Josh. And he's like, can you hate them a little more? <laughs> I was like, sure. <laughs> and so we read the scene again and he was like, that was great. Thanks. Uh, and that's that was the whole process. Unbelievable. So have you watched this back? Have you seen yourself back? And I can't remember if you watch your work or not. So I do. Um, I don't watch everything. Um, but big episodes I love to watch. So I I mean, I used to watch everything, but I don't have the time now because these children, the children. are so demanding. Yes. And they don't they don't get soap operas. They're like, Miss Rachel, we want Bluey. Right? <laughs> we want Bluey. <laughs> So, yeah, um, I haven't had the chance to watch this past week because I've been uh, living present day filming Claire. So uh, that's been a bummer because I'm so excited to see it. But you, yeah, I've been busy learning lines. <laughs> tell me what happened when you, you know, you're in the scene. And of course, you they it, it's so horrible what they do to Nikki. They literally put an IV. Of, I mean, it is so heinous. It was just so horrific. And then leaving the bottle there for her to like drink. I mean, what was it like doing those scenes with Melody? Because, you know, she plays drunk better than anybody I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's so fun. Yeah. I loved every minute of that. I mean, the, the dark, dark Claire, that was... The most fun I've ever had, particularly the dream, the hallucination that Nikki had. Right. That was, I think, my favorite scene I've ever had the pleasure of filming. Like it was so much fun. And because I think that you touched on it earlier, just that the character is so layered and so dynamic. There's so much going on. And her psyche is such a strange thing. I mean, it's so fragile and manipulated and just playing with those different layers has been a really enjoyable experience for me. I mean, when you read it and you're like, oh my God, I'm doing this to her. And then you're injecting her in the neck and then you're pressing. (laughs) That was my favorite part. (laughs) I had a friend who was like, is that um, like, can you be redeemed from that? Can you be redeemed from stabbing someone in the neck with a hypodermic needle? And I was like, ah, I didn't kill anyone, you know? Like. (laughs) On a soap. You can yeah. have murder, you, you know? Can. Yeah, yeah. So then take me what happens when they say, and here's Colleen Zank. She's going to play your Aunt Jordan. Now, had you known about Colleen previously? I don't know where, you know, how much you knew about her work on World Turns or any of that. But what was that like? Meeting like, this is the pair they're going to take down the Newmans. Oh, it was so exciting. I mean, Aunt Jordan, Aunt Jordan, Aunt Jordan. I feel like I said Jordan. it about 70,000 times uh (laughs) planting the seeds but I knew Colleen actually I had met Colleen a few years ago at an event in Marco Island called Soap Fest and so I knew uh I knew of her I'd met her uh I wasn't super familiar with her work but I knew that she was a legend so now I'm very familiar with her work and I just couldn't be more grateful for such uh powerhouse of a scene partner I mean I'm so lucky I really the women I've been surrounded with and I think that's such a cool thing too like the storyline has really been such a female driven uh thing which I also wanted to add to that you know who else I thought was actually fabulous in this was Amelia Heinley when she because you have to understand the pain that she played the pain and interestingly she wasn't Victoria Heather Tom played the role back then. So she wasn't even, that wasn't even in her purview. And yet you see this agony with her, like, oh, when I lost my baby, it killed, you know, and she's looking at Claire and please save us. And I thought she was great in it too. So 
and like the, I felt like I couldn't breathe when I was watching her too. Like she was just like, yeah, 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 I'm poisoned. Like she was so, she was struggling. Like <laughs> the I have to say that house was amazing. It locks people in, the drawers lock. Like I've never seen a house that can just really lock everybody in the way they had and, and the drawers lock perfectly and you can't get it. It's like, <laughs> I know that's, that's a good point. I wonder when those were installed. <laughs> So I'm thinking. Good job. So what has it been like for you? You know, we all first knew you as Abby Newman on Young and the Restless. You played the part back in 2008. I think you were there till right? And you were a teenager. And <laughs> and you were the good Abby and the young Abby. And what was it like then and coming back now? Is it weird or just great? Both. It's, yeah. it's so many things. Um, I was so surprised and happy to be welcomed back. I thought that was something that might not ever happen because conflict of character, I don't know. I mean, I guess anything's possible here, but uh, you know, I hadn't really had my hopes up. And then when this came around, I was so excited. Uh, I had really fond memories of being here and it was such a formative time of my life as well. Uh, so to come back, I underestimated how powerful an experience it would be returning. I have talked about this in interviews before, but the one thing that really stuck out to me was walking onto the the stage. There was this very specific smell and it's like almost like dried flowers. Maybe uh, it's the only way I could describe it. But when I walked onto the stage, it just hit me like a ton of bricks and I, I guess because smell is such a visceral sense, it was like all these memories just came flooding back to me. It was really cool. So all, all good. Yeah. <laughs> Being Eric Braden again, and then playing this scene with Eric, who, by the way, when he did the scene, like that bitch is crazy or whatever he was saying, I like, I spit out, it was so perfectly, like the way he dropped the line in there was so perfect. Do you know the line? I know it by heart because it's made a huge impact on me. It was who gives a damn about that bitch? <laughs> That's it. That's the one. That's what I'm going to say. Who gives a damn about that bitch? Do you make that into like a gif? I, I need that. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he, you come back and you're seeing Eric now and you hadn't seen him in 13 years 13 or years? 13 years? 13, I guess. Yeah. That's crazy. And was he like, who are you? Or did he know? He's <laughs> the coolest. He is cooler he than is a cooler. He is so cool. He was someone had said, like, oh, and it's Haley. She played Abby. And he he was like, Oh yeah. How are you? <laughs> like he was just so cool. And it was like, I'm good, yeah. I've been good. Uh he just has such a killer sense of humor. I I really enjoy working with him. So hopefully I get to do that some more. Well, the Newmans are a tough bunch. Like you have to know your lines with the Newmans. That's what I always heard. Like they all is that true? Or is that really why? Why do people say <laughs> no, I know there's an elevated level of like <laughs> yes? <laughs> yeah. You yeah. like sure. you wouldn't want to be caught off guard. I feel yeah. like sometimes people um yeah, it's good to know. It's good to be prepared. And I feel like that's what allows us really to enjoy the time on set because it's hard when, you know, obviously when there's a ton of material, you do have to really focus and keep it at the front of your brain because you're just cycling through stuff so quickly. It's in, it's out, it's in, it's out. Um, but if you do have a little bit of a lighter day and you're really well prepared, that's when you can have a really good laugh in between takes and I think everyone is just so funny like that's the one thing that is I don't know I, I wasn't expecting people to not be funny but they're so extremely funny Joshua was hilarious oh my god he's ridiculous he is so ridiculous so he added a lot to those days uh the big long ones because even though he didn't really say much he said so much <laughs> <laughs> when you had to do the crying scene when you were really emotional and you're sitting there you're I think you were on slumped against the wall mm -hmm. and you're just like I don't know she I don't even know she's there's so many things going on with her at that point did were you was that a one take thing or do you have to do it multiple times because it felt like you wouldn't want to ruin that performance because it was so great and I was just wondering was it just the first one or did you have to do it multiple times 
Yeah, it was the first one. And I, this is one of my favorite things about this medium is I feel like these really heightened emotional moments. It's like doing theater. You get to live the moment and that's usually what's captured and that's what everyone gets to see. And it's very authentic. It feels really present because it's like real life. You get one chance at the moment. And I really enjoy that. I think some people, it kind of stresses them out a bit, feeling like they don't have, you know, a few takes to find something. But I I really appreciate it because in moments like that, particularly, uh, I feel like you find the moment and especially those episodes that are so big and strong like the just everything that happened in that episode leading me to that moment finding the emotion wasn't extremely difficult because I was up to here with it uh and so yeah the I think it was scripted just Claire breaks down or something like that um and then, David is saying in the chat she cried enough to put out a fire but it was great <laughs> Yeah. I mean, some days I leave here and it's so funny because I, I'm a happy person. Like I I enjoy life. I'm a happy person, but sometimes I leave. And after a big day of crying, I feel like really good. I feel like I like got rid of something. I let something go. And uh, it's like very therapeutic. It can be really, it can be really therapeutic. I think, so they've set this up kind of beautifully. Like I was saying three things have happened because of this, what we just saw. One, We've got Nikki now back on booze, which is always great. Two, we don't know. Is Claire Claire or is she going to turn out to be Eve? And we don't know. And I'm assuming there'll be an investigation of what happened. You know, this is, you know, what happened years ago. Um, and it and the way it's crafted obviously leaves a room for her to be forgiven by the Newmans because she was misunderstood. She was told lies. You know, maybe she can have a relationship down the line with Victoria and Nikki. I don't know. You know, that it really left it open. And then, of course, Aunt Jordan escaping through a vent. <laughs> so, so so you've got all of this, right? So good. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But what do you think about that, that it leaves the door open, right, for her, as we're going to see play out who she really is? I know. I mean, I'm excited. I feel like that's part of what's so great about the storyline is that there's, it, it feels like no one was expecting it. So that's really fun. And then now, like you just said, the implications are huge. So it could mean so many different things for the long term. Who knows? I mean, we'll, we'll have to wait. And so see. You obviously know, and you can't tell us, but let's say she is actually Eve. How would, what would she do at that, you know, it, what she believes she was, is. She um, believes, yeah, right? Believes she's Eve, right. She believes she's Eve. We just don't have any proof other than Aunt Jordan saying it, although I believe it's probably true. But anyways, yeah, if she is Eve and what would she do with Victoria? Would she try to have a relationship with her? Ah. <sighs> It's hard to say because I look at, at Claire and I see that there's so much resentment that has been drilled into her that how do you undo that? How do you start fresh? I mean, it's a great idea. It's a nice fantasy, but that means unlearning. I mean, decades of what do you want to call it like manipulation so that's how her brain was formed that's her brain was formed believing these things and I mean I hope there's a really good therapist maybe in town that can do a little talk therapy maybe a little <laughs> we need a therapy. Yeah. Therapy. <laughs> get her a oh. Uh, service dog little <laughs> and let's just say she's actually Claire and was never and is not Eve what if she's just Claire well then I have so many more questions exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's like just as fun um why what who 
Like that's such a fun road to go down because then I feel like, okay, if am I, then who am I? If Claire isn't Eve, exactly. Who am I? And also what's Jordan's game? If she's not really Eve's sister, well then who is she? <laughs> what's the point? Why are we doing it? So yeah, I love all the questions and how much, uh, how open-ended it is. Like you said, it's really, right, it's very open-ended. It was done that way and constructed that way. So it leaves us and it's great because it's very hard these days in our social media, in the world we live to get a hot button story that people are really talking about in soap operas. You know, it, it, sometimes it's really hard because you see everything else in the world that takes so much space. Mm. But this has been a, a little bit of a, a, a lift for YNR and that people are really like, what's going on? And who is she and what's going on? Um, was there a favorite moment with Colleen that you've had that we've seen? That's a fun question. I, well, I mean, it wasn't with me, but the slash, I mean, the slash. The slash is amazing. Uh, I really love the moment when she, when Claire finally turns and says, I'm not listening to you anymore. I feel like that was a really powerful moment. And that was kind of just every shoe dropping. Like she, she finally kind of, it took a minute to process everything that was going on I loved I mean it just felt like how do you even start to try to think straight in this moment and so it takes a few scenes for Claire to like get with it because she's like what like this I did not see this one coming like so I thought that was a really good moment because it 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 was Claire's power and it took her a minute to gather it, but there it was. There it was. <laughs> she found it. Um, you know, this is so different from Kiki Jerome and GH, the role you won the Emmy for in, in 2018. And, you know, this, it, it did, I, I mean, everybody loved you from there. What is everybody telling you? How's Chloe? You know, are people telling you you're amazing on wine? Like what's the feedback you're getting from your buddies on this? Are they watching? Um, well, thanks for asking about Chloe. She's the light of my life. I love Chloe. You know that. <laughs> I so. know. We should do one of these together. Yeah. Um, she's, yeah, she's my best friend, Chloe Lanier, who played Nell. Chloe Lanier, everybody yeah. who played, yes. Uh, she needs no introduction. Nell from General Hockey. <laughs> yeah. Um, she is so funny. She, I don't know what's up with the algorithm, but it shoots out videos of me to her on Instagram. So her for you page is like me on YNR. Um, <laughs> so she sees loads of it. <laughs> and she texts me, she's like, I saw you say mother today. Like it was really good. <laughs> Do you, was part of taking this role the chance to play a completely opposite flip of what we would know you for? We know you playing the good girl. This, I have to say, I have enjoyed immensely. And I've said this before, but, you know, bears repeating. I loved Nell so much. I think Nell was one of the most interesting, fun, cool, badass characters I've ever seen. And so uh, I always was a little jealous. Like, oh, I wish... I why is Kiki being so nice to everyone? Like, it's boring. Like, um, rest in peace. But I... All right. <laughs> sweet thing. Um, but yeah, when I found out that this was the path that the story was going to take, I was so excited to sink my teeth into it. And I pulled a lot of inspiration from Chloe's performance. I just, I always really appreciated the light kind of, humor that she brought to the scenes I feel like sh sh there was just such a levity and um I loved Nell's point of view and I, I thought you know this is such an interesting opportunity to craft for Claire what her perspective is because no one I don't think on the planet has been through what this girl has been through so her perspective gets to be this like one of a kind unique thing and I just really enjoyed it. And I like the, uh, that dream sequence, the, the hallucination with Nikki, that was kind of like the, the little icing on the cake. Like how far can I take it? You know, I took it as far as I thought, like 
was humanly possible. It's interesting you say that because Nell was an unforgiving, like Nell stood by, you know, she stood by her choices and unforgivingly, unflinchingly, she was that badass. And I kind of feel like once we see what happens with Claire, Eve, you know, she may have that in her. We just hope she doesn't, we're just hoping she doesn't become like a mousy, a mousy Newman person. I know. Well, there's a fire inside of Claire. I think, you know, this has definitely knocked her down a peg, but that's inside of her. I so, love that. There's just like, she's getting dragged off and you're like, oh. I saw her getting dragged off and she was like, <laughs> like what? <laughs> what did I do? Where am I? What? Well, I guess we will have to see if we see her in, in incarceration or in the slammer or in the police station. I don't know. We'll have to see. I don't know. I don't know. Um, a couple questions for you. Uh, MJJ, I will love to see Adam meeting Claire. They have so much in common. What do you think about Mark Grossman and what would it be like for you guys to share some scenes together? Maybe you have already, but for our purposes here. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. He's a great actor. I'd love to share scenes with him. And I think um, from what I gather that his character is so interesting and uh, doesn't seem to have a lot of friends on the canvas. Um, so I think it'd be a great opportunity. Claire needs some friends. Adam needs some friends. I guess, what are they, half siblings? Or no, they're cousins. They're ne He's my uncle. Is that what he would be? Yeah. No. Yeah. Uncle, yeah. Uncle. <laughs> I can't do this Newman family map. <laughs> you'll need it, you'll need it. Uh, uh, half uncle. No, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Jonathan asked, what's been your favorite storyline so far in your soap career thus far? Ooh. I, well, probably the Dr. Bench storyline was a really good one. I'm not including this storyline here right now um, because this would be my favorite, but that's a boring answer. So <laughs> <laughs> the Dr. Bench storyline on GH with uh, Kiki getting sexually harassed at work, that was, that was a really powerful storyline that was really timely and uh, I was really grateful to be entrusted with that. And I felt like it was a, a really great thing for the character because she was kind of directionless for a while and finding her interest in medicine was really exciting. And then to have that taken away, it was, it was a, a really formative, I suppose, uh, experience for the character. So I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, and it was James DePaiva who yeah. played the role, right? Yeah, you're so good. Yeah, he was cool. I, I remember these things. <laughs> um, uh, they're asking, uh, Mad TV was one of my favorite shows. I remember you on some of those. Uh, loved the humor. What, you were on that? That was my first, my first real job in television, I think. I think I was 10 yeah, I did uh, like a load of episodes. I did like eight or something like that. Um, it was really fun. Yeah, the sketches were all really funny. I wasn't really allowed to watch the show. Uh, so I was only allowed to see the ones that I was in. <laughs> but oh, really, because <laughs> I was like quite small. <laughs> small. Even some of the ones that I was in watching them back, I was like, this is really disturbing. <laughs> like I did one that was... Uh, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, and they did that Haunted Mansion movie. So Mad TV did a skit of It's a Small World being turned into a ride. But it was like, I played Dakota Fanning. I played Dakota Fanning on that a lot. Right. Um, and so <laughs> we're like all these celebrities in this little boat. And there's all these like people of the world around. And then I just at like 10 years old, pulled out like an AK-47 and started shooting everyone. It was insane. <laughs> It's on you. How old were you? How old were you? Maybe I might have been twelve at that point. Like maybe. And were you acting since you were littler than that? Yeah, I started. I grew up in LA, so that made it easy. And uh, when I was three, I started doing commercials and print work, modeling, and then I started doing television when I was about ten. People are saying that you are going to end up. Uh, 
that Claire is going to end up being friends with Mariah. I would love that. <laughs> and you have you hung out with Cameron at all? Yeah, yeah, we uh, are living pretty close to each other. So we've carpooled to work a couple times, which is really cute. Um, I got to go to her baby shower, which was amazing. And yeah, it's like she's one of my best friends. So it's great to have this now to bring us together. Do you, do you get, when you're doing the performances, Claire, Eve, um, do they, are they, do you still feel it's like a work in progress in terms of what they're going to do with it? Or do you kind of, do you know kind of the long-term plan? No one tells me anything. <laughs> so are you literally like getting your script and going, oh gosh. I got it about a week before. So if, uh, I think I just got yesterday the scripts for next week. So I know that far in advance what's going on. And sometimes you can hear little whispers and people talk, but they're not always right. So you, you gotta... But do you need to know, okay. do you like to know ahead to inform your performance? Like at least you know where you're supposed to be landing in it, in the performance? Yeah. Are well, for this storyline, I did kind of know where it was going oh. because it was such a big thing. But for the the... Yeah, I guess that's a good point. I did know. I lied. I knew. <laughs> but you kind of know moving forward, do you have a trajectory of this character that you understand is, or do you think they'll flip it on you? Well, which I you, suppose they can do, right? They can do whatever they want. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess what I like about not knowing too far in advance, Haley wants to know because I'm nosy. Like, I just want to know because I enjoy the show. I want to know what's going to happen, like everyone. But as an actor, I think it's kind of better not to really know because that's what life is like. We don't know what's going to come next in life. So if you know your character and you know who they are and how they feel about things and, you know, how it works up here, then the information gets processed, you know, at some point. It doesn't really, I guess if there's going to be a big reveal, maybe you want to know what that's going to be. But uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um with Colleen Zank with Anne Jordan so when she leaves and she's got she had no idea she escaped to the vent does Claire Claire Eve know where she went I don't think so I don't think so <laughs> I mean do you see them in cahoots again do you think they would still get in cahoots again because there's still this takedown attitude that's what I'm I mean She's basically my mommy. Like, that's the woman that raised mom, me. Creepy mom, yeah. So there's definitely a loyalty. There's definitely love. I mean, that's the most heartbreaking thing, I think, for Claire, is that even with what Jordan has done, it, it it's still the one person that guided her through life and was her shoulder through adolescence and the person that put a bandit on her boo-boos when she was little and you know so there will always be love there even if it's completely tarnished but uh yeah how do you just erase these things so we'll see. I'm worried they're gonna be another take something horrible but it would be great if they I'm worried but I'd love it <laughs> it's great. I mean it's great and you know you have to do that I think you have to do that nowadays with the world being so fast foodish in the way we digest shows and how much streaming shows and how much options there are. How are you going to set yourself apart and give and, and move something along? What was great about this is some people are like, oh, it's moving so fast, but it sets up everything else. So it's like, you need to set it up and let's go. Like, let's not drag out what we saw this week. Look, I agree. I feel like it doesn't matter what you do. People are going to, I have something wrong with like not everyone's going to be happy with everything right so someone's going to have something negative to say about everything um that being said i feel like i completely agree with you because we've just had these explosive episodes what happens if you drag it out then it's not explosive anymore you're not getting that kind of like what factor which i love like in television that's my favorite thing when someone gets like shot in the back of the head out of nowhere or like you know that's those are those moments that those, are those moments that are just oh. what yeah and it's hard to do that in 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 daytime drama yeah you know, expected and that's what was great about this 
there is a question from David. He wants me to ask you who you think would be a good love interest for Claire on the canvas. Like who would be the, what, give us some, give us some options when you're looking at it. You may already know, but let's just say. I mean, it's hard. I feel like as obvious of a question as it is, I haven't really thought about it before because I feel like the, you can't love someone else until you love yourself. And we're a ways. We're from... way away. <laughs> but uh, to answer the question, I suppose if they're not related, then Adam would be cool. Or um, maybe she's not straight. Maybe she, maybe throw a wrench in the Tessa don't even, Ryan. We, don't, we don't even know that. Yeah, we, we don't know, know much. Know the, so, you know, it would be interesting. But it's just like, please not chance. They don't want you to change. Well, now I'm going to go for him. So shouldn't have said yeah, that's that. That's it, Vanessa. <laughs> We're done. Maybe Kyle could be her new love interest. Sharon is like, Kyle. Yeah. And I feel like uh, there's already some bad blood with Audra, probably. Like, get in there, annoy her. Yeah. Just annoy yeah. everyone, piss people off. That's what I want to do. I just want to piss people off. <laughs> and then someone's like, not Nate. That would be awkward dating her mother's ex. Now I'm going to do that too. Yeah. I think <laughs> we're giving them we're giving her <laughs> uh there is a person from saying i can't wait to watch the storyline here in france thank you disney carnival for being with us today yeah because they're a little bit behind okay sorry for all the spoilers <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that's interesting uh it that's it. They're asking about Mar West. Have you stayed in touch with her? And also Colleen worked with Mar on As the World Turns. So did you guys trade Mar West stories at all? A little bit. Yeah. Um, I haven't spoken to her much lately, but yeah, we definitely kept in touch a bit. Um, I miss her dearly. She's such a gorgeous, wow. She's such a gorgeous woman um, and phenomenal actress. I actually saw yesterday or the day before there was a tweet that said that it was the like five year anniversary of uh, Ava finding out that Kiki was dead. I was like, what? Like time. That's cool. time. The body bag scene. Yeah. Yeah. Which I still can't watch. Um, it's too sad. Uh, but yeah, we've kept in touch. And I was actually talking to Colleen about it today because she talking about keeping secrets in daytime. How amazing that the reveal of Colleen coming down the stairs like that must have blown people's heads off. I it was the most it was shock it was the most wonderful surprise to get to see her who was so beloved by so many people and such a, a you know staple that you know up from world turns and being in daytime and then to see her because she plays bad so good twisted so good and I think Josh knew that she could play so twisted and this he, this was so twisted and like weird like all of a sudden it was just like what is going on here and this, like this, this small woman is able to like bring down the Newmans. Yeah, like, that's what was so like. Wait, and then you're in it, and then uh, it was it was delicious uh, dramas you could possibly get, and I uh, it really it really was good. Um, K squared is asking, what's it like working with so many legendary characters of Y and R in those scenes? So I'm assuming Nikki, Victor, Josh, I mean, like all the, the legends of the show. Yeah, it's really fun. And I think it's especially fun. I mean, my first scene with Eric was when Claire was being Nikki's assistant, going in and saying, oh, I'm so excited to be here and work with you. And of course, I know underneath all of this, that I'm like, I hate you. Like, <laughs> you suck. And so I think it's really fun now, you know, that there was that faux reverence, but now that it was kind of all it, like turning around and just being like, and you like, you know, it's so fun because they're so respected and beloved to be someone that comes in and just doesn't care about any of that. That was like the most fun part of it all was to kind of, I don't know, just flip it on its head a little bit and not uh, bow down. Uh, there, MJ's asking, they need to compare Eve's DNA on file at Jordan, with Jordan. Is Jordan really Eve's sister? I mean, you're asking all the right questions. These are all the right questions, fans. Yeah. And we can't answer any of them. But uh, yeah. Uh, 
I, I, it is so wonderful to see you. And I, I, I can't imagine what it's like the mother of two twins and doing this role. And were you living in Ireland too? Yeah. Yeah. So people were asking about that. Like what? Yeah, I was, uh, well, I technically still have, like, I don't even know what's going on in my life. Um, all over the place. Yeah. So we were over there, we went over during COVID and then the girls were born in Ireland. And so when I was so blessed with this job, I kind of just got up and just left like we all just came over and I haven't sorted any of my stuff out back there uh so yeah I have a lot to do but it's great to be back and, and this is like you know yeah. amazing. and hubby's good with it <laughs> he's great yeah we met here so I knew it's, that. I knew that. he's got his life here so it's a little bit different than me going over there and you know we've got it's nice I feel like now we both have an appreciation for both places so we've it's two homes. I'm so lucky, you know? So lucky. Okay. And then, so hopefully the girls, I mean, your twins, when they watch, if you won't let them watch you on YNR. Do you know what's so funny? We were okay. staying with my parents and my mom was watching the show one day and I was on screen and one of the girls was like, mommy, 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 mommy. And I had this insane look on my face. I was like, or something like evil. And I was like, I actually don't want them watching this. I don't think that's healthy. It's also quite confusing. Um, yeah, I did a commercial when I was three, my first ever commercial when I was three years old. And I watched the commercial on television and I had like a hysterical breakdown. And I said to my mom, I was like, I don't understand. Like, how can I be there and here at the same time? And it like broke my brain, the meta, you know, observation of myself. So I don't want like them to think like that's their other mommy or like other mommy is a mean lady or I don't know. I feel like it's just a slippery slope. Uh, before I let you go, there's many people asking, are you still in touch with Robert Watkins? Yes. Oh, I love Rob. He's one of my best homies. He is just like sunshine in human form. Sunshine in human form. I know. I mean, it was the gang, Chloe, Rob, you. Okay. Gang, I know. What was yeah. the gang? Oh, God. <laughs> Other things. Um, and we have the Daytime Emmys coming up in a couple of weeks. And what was that like the night? You know, I, I talked to you right after you won your Emmy. We had that lovely moment together. Where is the Emmy now? And oh, okay. Would you like another one for this role as Claire E? One, like, let's just pile, pile them on. <laughs> I would is love it, yeah. Is it in Ireland or here? Where is the Emmy? So Cammy Cameron has two. She won one when she right. was young and one really recently. And so I've seen them side by side. And the older one, it's like, it's seen better days. Um, the, the globe is kind of just like, it's got a little sad part. And so I was like, okay. I need to be really careful with this thing. It's fragile. So I want mine to last. So I won't, I wouldn't take it on the plane. So it's still here. It's living in my parents' house. Um, it a very like hilariously proud prime real estate. Like right when you walk in the door, it's there. It's there. But it also is a good weapon, I suppose, for home intruders. So maybe that's why. I don't know. It does have a point. Yeah, women. they're sharp and it's yeah. heavy. It's yeah. like really heavy. Yeah, yeah, they are heavy. All right, <laughs> everybody, make sure to keep tuning in to The Young and the Restless weekdays on CBS and streaming on Paramount Plus and keep seeing what happens with this Claire, Eve, I don't know. I think we all have our, we all have our guesses. We'll see if it's all proven true. Um, and you've done a beautiful job. It's such delicious work to getting to see you um in this kind of role and much success and love to you and i hope i will see you soon and thank you everybody for joining us thank you Haley. i have a question yes when are you coming out with new music okay so here's what's going on the hey, remix man. i just the mastering just got done for the remix of back to myself the dance remix will be coming out in January of the single I released earlier in the year. And then I'm going back in the studio in January to record a couple new songs. So 2024, 
there will be lots of new music. And the remix is really cool because it gave new life to the song. And um, I've been working on that for the past few months. And uh, now it's time to go back in and cut some more. So I really hope 2024 will be a big year for me working on uh, releasing music. Oh, I'm so excited. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. So you'll all hear that soon. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, Haley, have a great holiday. Thank you. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone.